Hello Odooers and welcome back for another tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to create a custom operation to handle your return orders. In Odoo's inventory app, operations represent the different workflows used to manage the warehouse inventory. This includes incoming and outgoing shipments, as well as things like internal transfers and manufacturing orders. By default, Odoo categorizes customers' returns under the receipts operation type. A receipt is a order that enters our warehouse from a different location. However, it is possible to create a custom return operation in the inventory app, so return orders are grouped separately from the other receipts. This has a couple of benefits, first by separating returns from all other incoming products, and we can quickly see the number of returns we need to process, making it easier for them to manage. Second, it allows us to create a quality control point or QCP that only applies to return orders rather than all receipts. So let's head over to our database now and see how it all works. All right, the first thing we need to do is create a new operation to handle our return orders. So from the inventory dashboard, I'm gonna click on configuration and then head down to the operations type. Now to create a new operations type, all I'd have to do is click the new button in the upper left corner, but I've already created one for return. So let's open that now instead. As you can see, I've already named this operation type returns. Next, we need to configure the type of operation. And in this case, I've selected receipt. This tells Odoo the operation will be used to receive something into our warehouse. Now in the sequence prefix down below, I've entered RET, which is short for return. This is the prefix Odoo will add to the beginning of every return order number. For example, manufacturing orders use the prefix MO, which means every MO we create is titled something like MO12345. These prefixes help distinguish between the different types of inventory orders. Now, there are a bunch of other fields on this form, but they're not really relevant to this workflow. So let's go ahead and jump to the location section. So for the default source location, I've selected partners slash customers. And I've selected that field since the source location for return orders is coming from customers returning products to us. Now in the default destination location, I've selected our warehouse stock, which is where the return products will be stored once we receive them. Now, I could also create an alternate location for returned items, but in this case, I want to add them back into our inventory after we perform a quality check to confirm that they're still in satisfactory condition. We're going to send items to that failed quality check to a different location, but I'll show you that during the workflow. All right, that's all we need to worry about for this operation. Now, if we jump back to the inventory overview front page here, we can go ahead and see there's a card that appears for our returns operation. However, before we can start processing returns, this operation, we need to make one small change to our delivery orders operation type. To do so, I'll navigate back to configuration, select operation types, and this time we're gonna select delivery orders for the operation type. In the returns type field for this operation, I need to make sure our new returns operations section here is selected. The returns type field, which determines the operation is used to generate a return order. So when we click the return button on the delivery order, the return operation will be used instead of the receipts operation. And that's all we need to worry about for this operations configuration. Now, before we get to the return workflow, I also want to mention that I've created a quality control point or QCP that applies to our returns operation. This QCP will create a quality check for every return order, prompting us to inspect the product before entering it back into our inventory. I've also set a failure location on the check, which is a place we can send the product if it fails the check. QCP configuration can get a little complicated, so we won't go into the specifics of that in this video, but check out some of our quality app tutorials, which I'll link down below so you can learn more. All right, now I know that's a lot, but now everything's set up properly. So let's process a return for a customer. I'll first start on the sales application and click new to create a new request for quotation or RFQ. Now, let's say our customer, Terry Green, wants to purchase one of our recliners so we could start living a more laid back lifestyle. So I'll go ahead and add the recliner to the order product lines here. And then I'll go ahead and click confirm to turn this quotation into a sales order. Then I'll go ahead and click the delivery smart button at the top of the page to open the delivery order. Now, once the recliner has been sent to Terry, all I need to do is click validate to complete this order. After doing so, you'll notice a return button appears at the top of the order page. Now, let's say a week has passed and Terry decided he wants to return his recliner because it's making him too lazy. No problem at all. I'll click that return button on the delivery order and a reverse transfer pop-up window appears. 
then all I have to do is click the return button at the bottom of the window to create a new return order. The return order is opened automatically upon its creation, but I can also access it by heading over to the inventory application and clicking on the want to process on the returns card. And then of course, selecting the order. Once Terry ships the chair back to us, I'll click on the quality checks button here, which will open up the quality check for this return order. I'm instructed by the pop-up window to inspect the chair to see if it can be entered back into the inventory. Oh no, it seems like the seat was torn on its way back to us. There's no way we can sell this to another customer. In this case, I'll go ahead and click the failed button, which opens another pop-up window. And I wanna send this recliner to the location we've set up for failed returns. So I'll select the fail your location for return fail, and then I'll just click confirm. Now with the check process, all I have to do now is click validate to return the order to the confirmed the chair has been returned to us. And that's all I've got for you today, folks. You now know how to create a custom operation to process return orders. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.